11, verses 1 through 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the words of God, so that things which were seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and it was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for that he cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Let us pray. O gracious God Almighty, we thank you for this past week. We thank you for this very morning as we come here to receive your word, Lord. The words coming from the throne of heaven, the word of God. Father, we thank you for without your word of God, Lord, we have nothing, Lord. For all our trust and faith is in your son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. We thank you, God Almighty, that you, you are the healer. And by the stripes of Jesus, we declare healing, Lord, and we pray in agreement for healing for Pastor Jesse, Pastor Ken's mother, Pastor Michael, home oaks on him, Pastor Navid, his wife and mother, Sister Sidha's mother, Kim Yong Il Chang No Nim, Annabelle, Angie, Sister Pick, Sister Justine's father, Sister Rachel's father, Sukjin Gibson Nim's mother as well, Sister Daisy's, Daisy's father, Seyong Gibson Nim's mother, Sister Nanhi, Sister Alicia, Sister Amanda, Brother Jed's sister, Brother Max, Brother Calvin, Brother Chris, and Brother Tommy, we thank you, Lord. You said, I am the Lord who heals. I am a Jehovah Rapha. And so we go to you, Lord, through faith in your son, Jesus Christ, and pray in agreement for the healing. Father, we pray for the deliverance, the protection for John Paul. Father, we pray for peace for Jerusalem, for all the missionaries out there who have sacrificed all, who have given, Lord, up the things of their lives of comfort to go into places, Lord, that many times are hostile, many times are unchurched, Lord, to go to share your gospel, the greatest expression of your love by your son, Jesus Christ, who willingly and obediently died for the world. Father, I thank you, Lord, for each one here, I ask, Lord, for blessings for each one here in, the, in their families, in their marriages, relationships with their children, relationships amongst the brethren here in this family. Father, let us all be in unity in our families and this family of God. Father, we ask, Lord, for your touch. Lord, those who need healing, may they know that they can also receive their healing through faith by the stripes of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time. Father, for those who are looking for jobs and employment, may they go to you, for you said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. For you are a great, wonderful, mighty, powerful God, a magnificent God, a God who knows us, who knows the very hairs on our head, who can count and even name all the stars in the universe. You are the magnificent, almighty God. Father, we go to you. We thank you, Lord, for your son. We thank you, Lord, for this time that we can receive. And just as Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, where she received 
the very words of life. When we come here expecting to receive all that you have for us, every one of us, Lord, you know every single thought, every intention. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. Sometimes we are not faithful, but you are always faithful. We trust in you. We ask that your angels surround this place and protect it against any interferences or demonic attacks. We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit fill this place with the Shekinah glory. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We thank you, Lord. And, Father, for those who are traveling, we ask for safe travels during this time. We ask, Lord, for your comfort. Lord, be with us, Lord, during this uh, time of uh, this heat. But, Father, we thank you for the sun because we know the sun gives us life gives life to the planets, to the plants. But your Son, the Son of God, gives us life everlasting. We praise you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and praise you and give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And give the Lord a praise clap for God is good and all the time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good to see each and every one of you. For uh, Brother Sid, Sunig, and Son, and uh, was our missionaries there? Have they come here? Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Okay. We're continuing on on the theme of faith, and that's why it's part two. We had last week the the message on faith that saves, and now here this morning is faith pleases God, and. Faith is, um, there's many definitions of that. It's a moral conviction, reliance upon Jesus Christ for salvation, belief, trust. And this trust is with an implication that actions based on the trust may follow. And not only do we need to pray, but we need to believe that when we pray that our God in heaven hears our prayers and he answers them. All right, and I will share with you a little more about that because sometimes we stop at just the prayer and not taking the next step, which is to believe that God answers the prayer. Without that answering of the prayer, we uh, we, we we limit God, okay, and and then we begin to only think that He can only answer the things that we we feel are um, um, that man can do but we as spiritual beings you're a spiritual being as a born again believer you have a spirit that is alive so you have the capacity because as children of God we have access to the father through his son Jesus Christ so this is where the, the impossible can be possible through faith in God amen Okay, so we move along here, and we find it that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible to please him. So he says, the Hebrews writer says, For he that cometh to God must believe, or put one's faith in, and the faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That the actions based on that trust may follow. So... We have to believe that he is, that he is God. In the deepest, darkest moments in your life, when you think all is lost, we have to believe he is God, that he is bigger than your situation. He is bigger than whatever people are telling you. And sometimes when people, people who love you the most can be uh, the ones that uh, help you the least because they can tell you that uh, this is not going to happen, but we have to trust in the Word of God. You have to go to the next step. Everyone here, if you're a born-again believer, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you have access to the Father, okay? You have access, and, and this is where all things are possible. And he says, not only that he is, but you have to believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Rewarder means he answers your prayers. 
That's what reward is. He's going to answer your prayer. And, and you can feel uh, joyful that as a believer, all of us has equal opportunity unto God. Amen? Okay, so let me just share with you here on how faith pleases God. So we talk about one. Number one is persevering in your faith in God pleases him. In Jude 3, verse 3, Jude writes, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Contend means to struggle or to fight. You have to fight to stay in the faith. You have to fight because there's external stimuli, external things that are coming and telling you cannot, it's not going to happen. It never happened. And you have to fight to just stay in the faith that because we believe in a God who is a, who's spirit and is, he's invisible, okay? And the Bible says no man has seen God. So you're believing in something that is, not something, but in God who is spirit that you cannot see. I find that a lot of times it's difficult for men to walk by faith because men like to take control. We want to have things in our hands. We want to be able to see things, and then, then it can happen. Um, it's, it's not that women are less stronger, but in the spirit, in the spirit, a lot of women will, will believe, they'll, they'll grasp this, w w the word of God, and they'll believe in, in all their heart what God says. So let us all be people that are going to walk by faith. We're going to walk by faith. We are so used to, to having things in our hand. I, I know that. I, I'm speaking as a, a, as a man that if I don't see it a lot of times, it's, it, it's, not, uh, it's not real. But Faith is, we're going to find out, is something that is invisible, all right? And, and then we're going to hope for, we're going to, and as, as Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is, uh, is the substance of things hoped for, of ev uh, the evidence of things not seen. How can we believe in something that we cannot see, right? But that, you want to please God, we're going to have to trust in his word. We're going to have to trust in him that it can be done. So he says this, that we have to struggle. You're going to have to struggle and fight to stay in the faith. When all these things, experience is going to tell us everything Experience is going to say it can't be done. People are going to tell you it cannot be done. Um, the the circumstances, situation, um, are going to say everything to the contrary. But God is pleased when you struggle, when you fight to trust in Him, to believe in Him. Amen. It's hard. It's hard sometimes. It's so hard when our feelings is, are screaming that it cannot be done. It, it's impossible when we're in this darkness in the deepest time in our lives. If anybody has been in depression, they will know that it becomes dark. It becomes hopeless. But just know that there's a light. There's a light. Jesus is the light. So you keep your trust in him. When the world is collapsing around you, when things just don't seem right, faith in him is going to get you through. Amen? Number two, offering your first fruits to God by faith pleases him. As Deacon Charles wrote, God was pleased with Abel's offering. Remember about Abel, Cain and Abel? The first two uh, sons, I guess, he had Cain and Abel. And 
Cain offered the, uh, the grains or whatever of his uh, labor, and Abel offered some kind of maybe sheep or something unto the Lord, and God preferred Abel's um, offering. In Genesis 4.1, we see here, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bared Cain, and said, I have, a, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now, I know many people have studied this and wondered why uh, God preferred Abel's offering over Cain's offering, right? Uh, there's many uh, explanations, uh, and people come up with different ways, uh, uh, different reasons why. And some people believe it's because Abel offered the animal which had the blood in it and, and all that. But I want to stick to the scriptures here and uh, tell you that it's by his, the first fruits, that by faith Abel gave, gave his first fruits unto God, and that pleased God. God, first fruits. First fruits implies the best. First fruits means that first of that crop or what, whatever, the, the first of the animals in this case, the best, the first. We ought to give God the best. We here in this, uh, in this new, new Testament here, we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. So when we offer... Um, our bodies as a living sacrifice and everything that we have, we ought to give God the best, the, the top of, of the line. And I'm looking into it this here. Maybe Cain, even though he gave his, what, whatever, the fruits of, of, his, um, of his labor, he just gave him anything. He just, he just picked something out of his, his, uh, his uh, labor and he gave it to God. Whereas Abel gave the first fruits by faith unto God. You know, I thank God for our praise and worship, and thank you very much. You persevered. Amen. And I, I really appreciate that. I know what the, the odds are, but, you know, your, your service is unto the Lord. Okay, and I know you gave your all. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, um, and all of you here, uh, people out in the tech booth, they do their best here. Sometimes I get on them, but they do their best. All the ushers here, they do their best. All the women's group, they do their best. You serve the Lord. You give him the best, the first fruit. When you do that, not only are you doing excellence, right? You know, you're doing a great product, but more importantly, you are pleasing God. You are pleasing God. So if that is in your heart that you want to please God, and so you're going to do the best you can and do excellence. Then uh, you have uh, done what is needed, okay? And that, that will please God. So let us all, everything that we do, please God and give him the first fruits. Amen? Number three, walking closely with God by faith pleasing, pleases him. In Genesis 5.22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 365 years and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him Enoch was taken away at a very young age of 365 years old nobody laughed okay but anyway um because we know Adam lived to 930 and his son Methuselah lived to 969 years, right? But Enoch walked with God. Walking with God means that you trust him. That your decisions, how you, how you live, what, what, what you do, you're going to always communicate with God. You're always going to find out what his will is. You're always going to want to do what he prefers. You know, there's, there's this free will. 
we can do what we want to do. You, anyone can do what they want to do. They can choose to follow God, or you can choose not to follow God. Enoch, the Bible says, walked with God. He's consulting. He's with God. So he's in tune with God. The Lord Jesus Christ would only do, he would only speak what he saw the Father in heaven doing. Now, I, I'd like to get there. I would like to get to that point where everything I do, everything I speak is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking, right? Um, I'm not there, but uh, that, that is my goal, to continually to walk with God uh, 24 hours, 24-7. And then I thank God for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did and sh the shedding of his blood because so often I will walk out, but the Holy Spirit will convict me, and I can con repent and confess and get back online. So there's work in progress. In Korean, they call that kong sa jung, right? Under construction. So we are under construction. But let us endeavor to be like Enoch, to walk with God continually. Uh, too often, we have our own ways. We have great, wonderful ideas, but it may not be God's idea. It may not be God's way. What God has entrusted me is this ministry. There's so many decisions, so many things, so many people coming up to me, trying to, um, whatever, you know, um, request things. And... And everyone has a ministry. Every ministry, if it's of God, is important. But we cannot do everything for the world. You know, I suppose even Yoido could not do everything for all the different churches in the world, right? As big and, 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 and um, as big a church as they are. But I have to hear what God is saying. So as God will lead me, and then, then that is the way I have to um, see how we can enable other ministries and we support. Because it's so hard. Everyone has a valid, every, all these pastors coming in, uh, missionaries, but they all have uh, truly, uh, I believe, godly uh, ministries. But we just could not support all of them. We just couldn't. So it's hard. And, you know, I don't like to say no to anyone. You know, just like you, you probably, on, on the personal level, if people come up to you for help, you don't want to say no. You, you feel a little bad, right? But if we hear what God is saying then we, and we walk with him, we can do what he wants us to do. And together, if everyone did what um, God told them to do, we would be able to spread this gospel throughout the world. And that, that's the mission. That is the great commission, that we get the gospel throughout the world. You know, this little group here is spread out um, the effects of the impact of what the, the gospel uh, of who we support and all that is, is, is outside of the, the four walls of this church. And it's because of you, see? But then then God has entrusted me to, to listen to what he says. Amen? So let us walk with God in your personal life. You're going to find you're going to make less mistakes. You don't have to repeat doing things, you know. Um, we, we all make mistakes, but don't, don't go out of your way to make a mistake, but to walk with God, to hear God, just as Enoch did. Number four, trusting and hoping uh, in God's promises by faith through every situation pleases him. Therefore, uh, Romans 4, 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. 
And being not weak in faith, he, Abraham, considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, not yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. We know as um, Deacon Charles read, the faith is that substance of things not seen but hoped for. Now I want you to understand this hope is not a, a worldly hope. It's not, I hope it happens. You know, you ever had that? Well, I hope it's going to happen. This hope that we're talking about is of a confidence that it is happening. Okay, there's a difference. There, people have this hope that, oh, I hope it's going to happen. You know what? You don't need to pray. If you have that kind of worldly hope, just flip a coin. Heads, you get it. Tails, you don't get it. But we don't deal with that, right? Our hope and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so you can have a strong faith. You have a little faith, that's good enough. Just, just trust. No matter what you are going through, just trust in him that it's going to happen. So here, if we go back to creation, the world was void. The earth was void. Right? And whatever void is. Void. So God said, let there be light. There was no light before. He said, let there be light. Bam! There was light. Okay, he called it. That's what faith is. Then he says, let there be uh, mountains from nothing. Boom! There were mountains. You, you understand? It wasn't, but then he called it. We as believers, the Bible says, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. What does that mean? Begins here, not by the dirt on the ground, but by people who live on earth. We, our prayers, begin here. So now we can make God move. Wait a minute. He's almighty God. He's a powerful God. What you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose here on earth, you got to understand the order, will be loosed in heaven. So, just as God called these things into existence, Abraham called into existence. He, here he was, he's 99 years old. How many of you are 99 years old? None. Okay. Any women here, 89 years old. When all hope, was done, all hope was gone, when all the best doctors and all the scientists said, you cannot have a baby, Sarah. Work with me. Okay, work with me. You cannot have it because scientifically it is impossible. Somebody say impossible. You are 89 years old. Well, Abraham says, no, my God said that my wife is going to have a baby. Amen? People are looking at him as, Abraham, uh, you know, I really like you. You're a great guy, wonderful guy. But, Abraham, I think you're taking this God thing a little bit too far. Um. You were 99 years old, Abraham, and your wife, even more important, is 89 years old. Amen? But Abraham says, no, my God said my wife is going to have a baby next year. Okay, she was not pregnant at that time. She was not pregnant when they were visited by those three men who happened to be the Lord, okay? She was not pregnant. So you, he called into existence the things that are not as though they were. That is faith. That is what you can call it. You see something right now going on in this world here. If you understand prayer will move God, then you pray, pray at it. 
Pray. Right there. Pray. God, my marriage is broken. I speak this into existence. God, make it right. My marriage is a godly marriage. Amen? God, I don't have, I've been trying, I've been trying to have a baby all these years. You speak it. Now, you know, certain things got to happen, okay? You understand the man and the woman, and, and, but we're not, you know, I don't have to go in detail. So I know people that had like six years, they tried, had a baby, tried to have a baby. So there was somebody else praying for him. He prayed. Next thing you know, within the next year, she was pregnant. Big baby. Amen? Believe. Call things that are not as though they were. You have the capacity to do that as a believer. Okay, this is not going up to Namsan Tower. You know that tower up there? You know the one that turn, turns colors? And jumping off and, okay, God is going to save me. That's not what we're talking about here. But you can speak things into existence. It's not happening right now, right? But he said, no, it is. So you know how I pray for my kids? Godly, 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 man. Godly, I mean, you know, they're like, at the time they were 10 or 12 years old or whatever they were, godly young men, okay? They're not adults yet, but I'm speaking it right now. I'm speaking it at that moment, amen? Do you understand? That is faith. You're going to get stubborn about something, you stay in a faith. You trust in the Lord. Some things are going to be in the future, right? We're talking about the future a lot, not some, but some may be near term, some may be long term. But that is the faith that the kind of faith that is going to please God because why? Because you trusted in Him. You ought to be excited about faith. I'm excited because we, we ought to be full and filled with hope in our hearts, no matter what your situation is. Your situation might be X, but you speak Y. You speak it. You, you declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the authority. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak it in Jesus' name. You don't have a job? I got a job in the name of Jesus Christ. I've got it in Jesus' name. In, and you speak in your own language, okay? Whatever. But that is confidence. If you are going to be stubborn, be stubborn about your faith in Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Otherwise, I would have given up the fight. I would have given up this thing, but I kept my faith. My wife and I kept the faith in this ministry. Amen? Yes. And then finally, believing that God answers your prayers by faith pleases him. That's what I've been talking about. But let me give you scripture now. Mark eleven twenty two to 26. And Jesus answering said unto them, Who's speaking here? Jesus, right? Yeah, because it's red letters. No, no, no. <laughs> he is. Okay. And faith, have faith in God. Okay, so have faith in the system. Amen? That's what he's saying. Have faith in the governments. Amen? Have faith in the weather. No, what he's saying is have faith in who? In God. So you eliminate all the distractions. You eliminate all the other things, variables, and you live this life where you have faith in God and God alone. You know, you walk around and say, I trust in God. And you hear these things that are going to, going to tell you, no, it can't be done. No, yeah, yeah, it's never been done before. But you said, no, I rebuke those thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ because I have faith in God. And that's what Jesus is saying very simply, very simply, have faith faith in God. Then he says, for verily I say unto you that whosoever, so that means that's all of us, right? As, and especially believers, for whosoever that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, 
but shall believe that those things which he said shall say it shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Now we're gonna we're gonna go deeper into what these what faith is. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye, ye shall have them. And when you stand, okay, stop here, stop here. Now I'll finish with that. So he says here that when you pray, remember this, all you prayer warriors, uh, I thank God for the prayer warriors in this church. I thank God that uh, my wife has restored this, this prayer group because I have seen so many miracles happen, so many wonderful things happen because of their prayers Prayers are one thing, okay? We need to ask God, right? Ask and you shall receive. So we need to pray to God. So when you pray, we need to take that next step. Not only pray, okay, God, God, I want, you know, this, 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 whatever, whatever the prayer is. Take that next step in the next dimension and say, I receive that God. Why? Because you trusted that God heard your prayer. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. God does not work on Saturday and Sundays and uh, Korean holidays. So Chuseok, don't pray to him because he's, he's on holiday. Amen? And sometimes he takes like three-day holidays on weekends. God has to sleep. He has to sleep. and Right? Amen? No, the Bible says God does not sleep or slumber. He does not take the day off. He works on Saturdays and Sundays. He's always awake and he's ready to receive your prayer. Amen? So, when you pray, and it could be like on the way to the subway, yes? Oh, wait a minute. I thought I have to be kneeling and my hands uh, praying like this, and then the God will hear me. No. God, remember, Enoch walked with God. So if he's walking, he's probably not walking like this with his eyes closed because then he would hit the trees and the acorns would fall on his head, right? So he probably was not closing his eyes. So when you're walking, or you can pray in your closet, your prayer closet, you ask God, and you know God is awake. He hears your prayer. He answers them. The faith part is saying, I receive it. I receive it. And then you, 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 you walk and you act like now, hey, I got it. All right, he answered my prayer. So what does this mean? The Bible says, do not be anxious for anything. If you are worrying and if you have prayed, you didn't take that next step of believing that God answered your prayer. We need to take that next step. A lot of people get ulcers because they pray, they pray, they pray, but they stop at the prayer because God is deaf. No, he's not deaf. He heard you. So if God heard you, now your faith is saying, I receive. He answered, and, and then he heard me. There's something happening. Your prayer, God receives it. He answers it. And he already knows before you pray, but he wants you to pray. He answered it, and then now this process is, I received it. And sometimes we get so nervous and scared, right? And um, so we need to pray over and over. Pray through it where you get to the point where now the you have this confidence. Okay, God, God answered my prayer. It's not God has no problem on his side, okay? The problem is on our side because the faith or the lack of faith that we didn't we believe he didn't hear it. Okay, so maybe you don't need to turn the music on when you're praying. Okay, so that way you don't get confused. He is not confused. We need to be people of God that walk by faith because it says without faith it is impossible to please him, okay? Let me end and conclude with this here. Why many of our prayers are not being answered. In Mark 11, and uh, I, I move on to uh, 25, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do, you, ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven 
forgive your trespasses. You notice how these verses, these two verses are linked to prayer and then um, in the faith part. If you have not forgiven someone, and it may have been this morning, it may have been something happened last week, last month, last year, and I hope not last five or ten years ago that you still have unforgiveness in your heart, then God is not going to forgive you. So therefore, now we're working in a, a, a situation where the Holy God and us are separated. You understand? Because he, if he doesn't forgive us, he's not going to answer the prayer because there's no communication. You have cut the link. You've cut this relationship with him. Unless you unless we forgive other people. This horizontal part. We need to forgive others. Because if we haven't forgiven, he doesn't forgive us. And then you can say, I have faith, I have faith, but it's blocked. It stops. Okay, block. Because God has not forgiven us. And you know, you can be the strongest prayer warrior in the world. But unless we have forgiven, once you forgive, true, heartfelt forgiveness, will you forgive others? Whatever they did, whether you were 99% correct and they were 1% wrong, or in most, in, in most cases is we were 100% right and they were 100% wrong, okay, whatever. Whatever your ratio is, the Bible does not talk about ratios. He just says, forgive others. Amen? Let's forgive others. As Brother Alex will come up here. So now we see here the key to faith. Faith's got to work with this forgiveness with others. Faith has to, when we pray, but take this next step and then believe that we have received the answers to our prayer. We had great testimonies of people that were, were given the notice. Given a notice of stage four cancer. Not good news. Not good news. But faith that God heals. <laughs> See, receive, receive that. What, it, what? What is it? You need a job. You don't have a job now. You pray. You ask him. Then you believe God. Thank you. Thank you, God. We gotta learn to be thankful to Him. Then you get the job. Some people say, "Oh, it's not the job I wanted." Hey, you can put food on the table, you know. So let's get to that next step where the faith, you pray, okay, you earnestly pray. You cry out to him. He hears you. Faith is saying, "I thank you, Lord. Thank you. So every believer, the hope part is that waiting, is that waiting, and then you're going to receive that. The hope for the eternity is when we're going to be with him forever and ever that, that's the greatest hope we can have is to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ and I pray that this morning your faith that your eyes are open the eyes of understanding are open here this morning you have access to him let's pray Father I thank you that you have given us Lord access to you through your son Jesus Christ who died for us, who shed his blood that we could be washed and cleansed from all our unrighteousness and all our sins and forgiven. We believe in our heart that Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day you raised him from the dead. We have faith, Lord, and trust that that happened 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord, and praise you. And to you and to you only, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Will the ushers come forward now as we will remember.